What's going on, smart people? You know, a lot of you seem to have a couple bones to pick with me uh, when it comes to me using Idle to do my coding in Python. And you think I'm going to change what I do just because you say so? You think I'm really going to change my coding habits? <laughs> in a completely unrelated note, I just installed Anaconda today, and I was uh, doing some playing around with the IDE Spider. And I gotta say, it's, it's very nice. I mean, I guess it's kind of cool how it... Uh, gives you hints about if your code is about to compile wrong, like if you forget a colon or something like that. Um, it's not very useful for, I've never made a mistake in coding before. Uh, it's like syntax errors. <laughs> What's that? I think I've read about that before. No, but the reason I installed Anaconda today was because it, uh, a large part of my project, as you know, is just converting a Mathematica notebook into Python. And Mathematica is extremely user-friendly when it comes to symbolic manipulation. And by that I mean if you want to define a function in terms of a few variables and you want to leave it in that variable form and look at it later as variables, you can do that very easily. Python, it's not as easy, but it's very easy if you have this one library called SynPy. And to be honest, it was kind of a pain to install by itself. So what I ended up doing was just uninstalling Python, the, the version that I had, reinstalling, or not reinstalling, installing Anaconda, and along with it came the libraries like Matplotlib, NumPy, SymPy, everything I could need. So I'd say it was a pretty nice trade-up. So now that I have SymPy, uh, I can do all the symbolic manipulation. The only thing is that it doesn't look very pretty when I do it. And apparently there's ways to get uh, Python to communicate with LaTeX and have the output formatted as how LaTeX would do it. And if you don't know, LaTeX is beautiful. But for some reason, it's not communicating with MicTech, which uh, I don't know how to fix yet. That's that's just a formatting problem. It's, everything that I need it to actually do is working now. This is just a matter of taste. I'd like it to look prettier. Um, so probably within the next couple days, I'll figure out how to just format it the way that I want to. But yeah, the, the project itself is coming along really well. So far, I have in and around like 200 or so lines of code translated from... Mathematica into Python. And so far this has been really fun because each little block of code in Mathematica, it's not really testing my knowledge of Python, but it's fun little exercises along the way, and each one is a little bit different than the other so far. So for example, one part of the code will be finding a maximum of a certain function, of a certain Python distribution function. And then I'll have to be like, how do I want to do that in Python? Because the one thing that Mathematica has no shortage of is libraries that'll just take care of stuff for you. And Python has that stuff too, but I like to minimize how much I use uh, imported libraries as much as possible just because I like to know exactly what my code is doing. What's more correct is to say that I don't really like using the pre-built functions within those libraries as much. Um, Having said that, if I have an algorithm that I think accurately finds the minimum of a value, what I might do is test it against one of those pre-built functions in Python. So, for example, you could say something like from scipy.optimize import fmin, and that's a very easy way to find the minimum of a function for you. But that tells you nothing about the algorithm going inside or going on inside of it, which would make it harder to translate into something like C++ or something like that. So long story long, uh, once I find out that mine works with the pre-built libraries, or it's giving me the same answer, I just, I like, I prefer my own little code. And obviously there's exceptions to that. I mean, I'm still going to use, like, NumPy and all that good stuff. But anyways, Anaconda and Spider is going to take a little bit of getting used to, like, making graphs and it not popping up like it does in Idle. That's going to take some getting used to. I don't know, I'm going to miss Idle. It's, it's, I felt a connection with it because it was like, that's, that's the, that's the uh, IDE that the pilgrims used. Like, it's it's like leaving my ancestors behind. But in other news, it seems like people liked the whole meme video that I did yesterday. So uh, I'd like to do that again in the future, but I, it just doesn't seem like that subreddit is as active as it would need to be for me to do it anytime soon. So that's on you. You guys got to start posting more memes, and then I will do more meme review. Also, I think this Saturday will be the day that I post the first video in the series on tensor calculus. This is going to be like a preliminary video, making sure everyone's used to the notation. We can all agree on what like a vector is, things like that, what it means for a coordinate transformation to happen. Um, but I'm excited. I got, I've pretty much finished all my notes on it and everything that I want to say. One second. 
I'm pretty much going to be following this book, Tensor Calculus for Physics, by Dwight E. Neuenschwander, almost verbatim. I'm going to be saying things in my words, but it's going to be very, very close to this book. And then we're going to do some of the exercises in them as well. But we'll see. I think it'll be fun. I think it's going to be helpful and useful. And um, that's going to do it for this little update video. Uh, let me know in the comments section what's more important to you to be added to this video. Better audio or better lighting? Let me know in the comments section. Bert Macklin, FBI, out.